Cinema Classics is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.com. The award-winning Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to the shows online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Johnny DiLoretto. And this is Cinema, Cinema Classics. Classics. Yeah. Oh. We are at the Gateway Film Center, as usual. Yeah. And um, this is always interesting, John, when the National Film Registry, let me get this straight, inducts new titles every year into the Library of Congress? Well, it's, it's, a, it's an archive uh, that stays forever, even longer than our shows. No, considering we're cinema classics. We may be destined for the Library of Congress. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, the National Film Registry, and I'm a, a bevy of these films that they put in every year, and uh, some of them we know, and some of them we don't. Yeah, I, I would love to know more about the, uh, yeah, see, the Library of Congress announced yesterday. Very good. Thanks. The, see, it's the Library of Congress. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever read that stuff? No, no I just read Of course things. I don't. Just a, it's not even two paragraphs no, down. No, besides it made too much sense. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. Here you have the full list, but here's some, like, okay, so for instance, uh, the 2014 honorees, a couple of them that are instantly recognizable, The Big Lebowski, oh, listen, Ferris Bueller's yeah. Day Off, um, Saving Private Ryan, and Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. House of Wax. Yeah, there's lesser known titles on here, <laughs> like uh, Ruggles of Red Gap, <laughs> which is actually a Charles Lawton movie that I've heard of. Um, uh, let's see, what else is here? Luxo Jr., <laughs> The Way of Peace, uh, 13 Lakes. No, wait a minute. Though, I mean, one that you and I could agree on. How do they get on there? What? Rio Bravo. Oh, for sure. I'm, so, I'm kind of shocked that Rio Bravo. Wasn't on there before. I know, I know. So you're talking after high noon. Mm -hmm. You're talking, you're taking it from the the, the big plains and the lonely city and yeah. the lone cowboy to that little sheriff's office. Yeah. A, a little bit small for John Wayne and yeah, Dean Martin. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, and Ricky, Ricky Nelson. Even Ricky Nelson's ego. None of yeah. that can fit in there. But it is nice because, of course, Howard Hawks had, you know, really, with high noon, had taken it. Yeah, he, he wanted to make the antithetical Western for yeah. that movie. Um, you know, it's, it's really a fascinating list because it spans years and decades from 1913 to 2004. It looks like the most recent um, film on the, this list, 2004 film, being 13 Lakes. Okay. The, th the 1913 film yeah. being Burt Williams' Lime Kiln Club Field Day. Isn't that something? Yeah, what is it? I just happened to miss that movie. What is it? I don't know, but we ought to have it here. That is weird. <laughs> but, uh, you know, think about Ferris Bueller's Day mm -hmm. Off. Mm -hmm. Think about that as, as the depiction of a teen and all of his glory and his sorrow. I don't think, maybe there's not been a better depiction of a teen than in that movie. So what? it certainly is a touchstone moment in teen movies. Yeah, you know? Uh, man, Matthew Broderick is just yeah. lives and breathes Ferris Bueller. Yeah. And it's such an original, it's kind of like that, you know, we've talked before about 80s comic figures and like the Bill Murrays, the Michael Keatons, the Chevy Chases. And here's a way for the teen idol to kind of tap into that vein of humor, kind of cocky, yep. confident, um, you know. Uh, that that is the quintessential '80s comedy hero is kind of like a con artist who, who wisecracks his way to the top, and that's Ferris Bueller, you know, and that's a great. My kid has actually been he loves Ferris Bueller, watches ah. it all the time on uh, Netflix. Now, I didn't see Risky Business here, but no, but I'm sure. I mean, certainly but, I mean, it may know, already be on there. Yeah, it yeah. may be on there, and if not, probably one day destined to be on there. Here's a favorite film of mine on here is Little Big Man from 1960. Yeah, boy, now that kind of upends the Western, right? It does, yeah. At the time, it was sort of seen as uh, an apology, a Western apology to some degree. Um, Arthur Penn directed it. It's uh, Dustin Hoffman yeah, boy. telling his story. He's in this old age makeup, and he's you know supposed to be a man like 100 years old, and he tells this really picaresque story about uh, him being raised by Native Americans and then, you know, basically 
the, the mythology of the Old West, he goes through in and out of being the Western hero, being the uh, Native American victim, being the Native American warrior, being the outlaw. You know, he goes in and out of it. It's a fascinating movie. And, and a, it's comedy. Great bunch of characters mm -hmm. that he meets along the way. Now, from a more of my growing up, mm -hmm. uh, a powerful film with Roman Polanski's Rosemary ba Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. Now, boy, if you wanted a feel for New York and all its claustrophobia, mm -hmm. its paranoia, uh, and do you wanted to see what Frank Sinatra's wife actually had some talent? Yeah, uh, that was the place to see it, right? Yeah, that was the place to see it. Rosemary's Baby was, and it was a big deal. Uh, I think I showed that when I was first in charge of movies at a college, mm -hmm. uh, and I think I embarrassingly cut. Can you, you cut? believe that what I did, did that? I, I think I cut some scenes. You're kidding I mean, me. Yeah, I, what it, would you it's to cut? my embarrassment. I don't know. I have no idea. Well, it, was like some, the, it was some offensive part of that. You're kidding. And I think that was the movie, and I am so embarrassed by that. This is the first time I've ever revealed it to anyone. Why wow. do you I'm fascinated I, I by that. Now? No, this is great. Well, it was a very conservative college. It was, it was a very conservative college. Were you afraid somebody was going to uh, And I thought it would be better it? not to. Yeah, I thought it better not to. And uh, while I don't think I had much repercussion, I don't even think anybody may have noticed, mm -hmm. it's to my embarrassment to this course that I would even think you capitulated oh, to this. Oh, jeez. Anyway, dimwits. that was then. And yeah. that was how powerful that movie was. Well, it was. I mean, think about it. It's, it's 1968. There's the free love movement is happening. And, you know, there's all this kind of sexual freedom going on. And then here's this movie that basically kind of I don't know, it, it weirdly alludes to that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and it turns out that she's raped and drugged, raped and... and uh, everybody in her, in the Dakota... Impregnated by by Satan. Yeah, <laughs> and they're all converging on her, mm -hmm. so she has no place to go. Right. She's just confined, and it's good. So it really, the movie is a slow burn. <laughs> <on the horror laughs> it is. Basically, yeah. everybody's working on her and working right. on her and working on her, and you, you don't know if she's paranoid or not, and then it turns out that you know she's, she is uh, molested. Well, and, it, and it's a life. great pleasure to all those people who don't live in New York who want to think that it's yeah, nothing right. but menacing vampire-like. Now, here's, you know, we close our show out with the music from this one yeah. uh, quite frequently. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, it is about time somebody recognized that movie. Other than, you know, it has a, it has a huge following, but for it to be officially recognized yes. as an American classic, that movie is such a strange mix of, you know... It's Vincent seen it? Oh, yeah. Man, when, when he was uh, two or three, we used to watch it he, over and over again, reenact scenes from it. Because Monk is a bad boy. He I is. Mean, he treats he some is, of these kids very rough. And yet he's, <laughs> he's really warm. That's what I'm talking about. There's this mix of he is sweet, he's funny, he's menacing, he's kind of like has this underlying current of, uh, you know, he's like going to punish these kids. He takes pleasure <laughs> oh, in it. Yes. Um, I think the best... The moment when Gene Wilder says, uh, wow, um, two nasty children gone, three <laughs> sweet little children left. <laughs> and he says it with such, you know, but as, as a parent watching it with my kid, I, I just adore that movie. And it was, uh, you know, manhandled in the Tim Burton remake and all of its beauty was sucked out of it. Yeah. So well, it's good that this is on there. Yeah. And so, you know... One of the ones on here that I think is most impressive to me is the Big Lebowski. Yeah. And I think the Coens have something here that's that's enduring. And perhaps in Jeff Bridges as the dude. Right. You know, where in the movie, where can you find from a movie just one word, the dude, and people know exactly what you're talking about. I know. That's, that's, <laughs> that movie has a fascinating story. I, you know, I was not a fan of it when it came out, and uh, as a Coen Brothers fan. And uh, it really took a while for that movie to catch hold and grab onto an audience and now you know they have big lebowski festivals all across the country I know they, they do uh, yeah. it, it was really turned into an iconic role for jeff bridges yeah. so if you want an idea of what a slacker is like mm -hmm. see the big lebowski yeah for sure otherwise visit the library of congress and check out <laughs> yeah you know, check out this list and and you know, unearth some of these great movies. <laughs>